Jimmy Thang from Maxima PC here at CES 2016. I'm here at uh, AMD's suite speaking with uh, Rob. And uh, Rob, can you tell us what we're looking at here? Sure. So what we have here is a side-by-side -side setup with on the right, this is our next generation graphics architecture called Polaris. And on the left, we have an equivalently configured system except with a graphics card from our competition. What we've done here is hooked up two power consumption meters to these systems to show the power required to achieve 1080p 60 frames per second with Polaris versus what the competition offers today. Can you, can you tell us what the video card is, uh, the NVIDIA video card? Uh, can we? I think we can, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's a GTX 950, I believe. That's correct? Yep. Okay. And, and so what we have here is Polaris is consuming less than 90 watts of power to achieve 1080p 60 FPS. Whereas the GTX 950 consumes 145 or to 150 watts of power to achieve the same performance. So that's a 2x approximately performance per watt increase by selecting Polaris, uh, our next generation graphics. And that of course is a total system power. Yes, that is the total power of the entire system. It's really hard to isolate specific graphics card power, but these systems are configured identically. And um, if consumers care about getting uh, high refresh rate displays, we've got DisplayPort 1.3 and HDMI 2 in Polaris. We've done tremendous things on power efficiency, and we're not even done optimizing the silicon or the drivers uh, to bring all the power efficiency stuff to life. So this is first graphics card back from the fab, very early drivers, and already we're uh, 2x performance per watt improvement over the competition and our current tech that we have. So, so can you talk a little bit briefly sort of at a high level about Polaris is is uh, power per, you know per performance per watt is that what it's going to be about yeah well it's a couple of things uh, we define Polaris as uh, FinFET the brand new um, process technology for manufacturing a graphics chip uh, and that's 14 nanometer FinFET it's uh, a huge improvement over the 28 nanometer graphics cards available today uh, we've also iterated graphics core next so now we have the fourth generation graphics core next architecture we've done some pretty major improvements to geometry and shading efficiency uh, we'll talk more about that later in 2016. Uh, for people who enjoy game streaming, we've got H.265, 10-bit encode and decode support all the way up to 4K. So the very latest encode decode technologies uh, for watching video and for streaming video. Uh, we also have support for HDMI 2.0a, which should bring 4K 60 hertz support or 4K HDR, uh, which is a brand new TV spec and monitor spec. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and we also have DisplayPort 1.3, which will make 120 hertz 4K possible or 240 hertz 1440p. And all of that stuff would be compatible with AMD FreeSync technology. So if you care about video quality, power efficiency, rendering performance, uh, display technology, there's something new in every category. You guys are still using HBM as well, high bandwidth memory? Uh, we have the flexibility to use HBM or GDDR5 as costs require. Certain market segments uh, are cost sensitive, GDDR5 can be used there. Higher end market segments where more costs can be afforded, HBM is viable as well. Uh, I know you guys just you know revealed it, but do uh, you guys have like, any release date plans or anything like that? Not yet. Okay. Can't talk about it. Cool. But it will be 2016. Cool. Uh, might as well uh, talk about the displays down there, I think. Sure. That's uh, HDR. Uh, down this way. Okay. Uh, so, I think gamers have been, uh, they've been locked in a war over TN versus IPS or MVA, just panel tech for a really long time. Right. And it's clear that there is a passion for display quality amongst gamers. I, myself, am a guy who only buys MVA panels or IPS panels. Um, but there is the next step beyond that, and that is called HDR. Every display that consumers have seen today, chances are they are standard dynamic range or SDR. SDR TVs are based on some specifications designed in the 1930s through 1950s for CRTs. That is, the amount of brightness that they can produce and the amount of contrast between dark and light that they can show you and the amount of color that they can show you are based on standards that are over 60 years old. That 
it's kind of absurd. We're in 2016. Uh, so the next step is high dynamic range or attempting to take all the capabilities that the human vision system is capable of and replicating that on a screen. So when you look through that viewport, that screen, it looks like you're looking at real life. That is the ultimate goal. So what we have here is a high dynamic range display on the left versus a standard dynamic range display on the right. And it's hard to capture in a camera, but the standard dynamic range display... I, I feel like you can even see like the blacks are a little bit blacker yes. on the left. Yeah, so uh, HDR is kind of summarized as having more colors, uh, also better contrast ratios, that is uh, being able to produce nuanced black levels, being able to show uh, very bright whites without washing out the black levels in the scene. Um, it, it's about having more vibrant colors and essentially what gamers have been seeing if you compare the two side by side it looks like a film has been placed over the SDR display but this is the same content running on two identically configured systems the only difference is one's an HDR display and one's an SDR display and the high dynamic range display is more colorful, it's sharper, more vibrant, the blacks are deeper, the reds are better, the oranges are better, the blues are better if you care about display technology, HDR is super important. And the thing is that we want to bring HDR to life on not just Polaris products, but also current generation Radeon R9 300 series GPUs as well. And that can be done over both HDMI and DisplayPort. That will be a driver update uh, that we anticipate will arrive later in 2016. And so you'll need uh, an HDR display they are coming. There's tons of them here at CES. You'll need that updated driver. Many gamers, of course, already have the graphics cards that I described. And uh, you'll need games that output to HDR. And those are coming in 2016 too. We're already talking to game devs. So um, if you're a display snob like me, you care about colors, black levels, brightness, contrast, color accuracy, HDR is really exciting. I'm super thrilled about it. And uh, that's coming this year. Cool. So it's it's you, you need like the panel you said, uh, the software, the drivers, yep. and then the GPU yep. to take to basically take absolutely. Of it. It's and, and it's a trend that that will unfold over 2016 uh, as gamers upgrade to new displays in 2016 or 2017. I think the industry will naturally evolve, or I hope it will naturally evolve in that direction because the the quality is unbeatable. This is a step beyond IPS versus TN arguments. You know, we're talking. Uh, color accuracy that can't be beaten and in fact I can show you here uh, we have a little diagram over here the small polygon on the right BT 709 is all the colors a normal SDR display can show you today BT 2020 is all the colors that an HDR display can show you and the scale on the left 1 to 10,000 is is brightness and we're not talking about making the entire screen brighter. Obviously, that would be very uncomfortable. But we're talking about using brightness in intelligent ways to make the star points perfectly, beautifully white, like they should be, instead of sort of a weird gray color. And, and the color accuracy is just remarkable. Right. I mean, even on the camera, you can see that the, the whites, the stars, look much uh, brighter yep. uh, compared to the, you know, Absolutely. the TV. Cool. And, uh, well, this, this, I mean, you, this, we're looking at, obviously, we're looking at uh, televisions. Yep. This will be coming out to monitors as well. Yeah, the entire display industry is looking at HDR. It's, uh, uh, the display ecosystem understands that uh, pixels are important, but uh, better quality pixels mm -hmm. is important too. And for a long time, we've been racing towards more pixels, going 1080p, 1440p, 4K. Uh, and now the industry, or even AK, and now the industry is going, okay, we have all these pixels, let's make them better quality mm. too. And that's what HDR is designed to do. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, of course.